blacks hate blacks. It's not just a myth. Why is it we do not have the same respect for members of our race as we do for some other race, especially the white race? And that we were told, quite to the contrary, that we were from a land of savages, of cannibals. And except by the grace of God and the white man, we would have been a lost people. So we should be on our knees forever praying and thanking God that we were brought, even in slavery, to this land to escape the horrors of Africa. And this was brought in and drilled into us generation after generation. Greetings and welcome to another week of Here to Help You. I am Dave Rankin, or as my handle just says, I are Dave Rankin. <laughs> I may be solo this week because, of course, my beautiful and wonderful wife is away. Um, however, though, I'm definitely not alone in spirit. So I want to go ahead and say a thank you very much, Miss Simone Jennifer Smith, for all the efforts that you continue to do. Um, this week's show, I, I am very excited to go ahead and present information today regarding today's show um the gentleman who we had a chance to go ahead and see right there at the beginning of the video mr chancellor williams it's one of my favorite authors when it comes to african history or african hour story as some people like to go ahead and call it um what such a wonderful message a plethora of knowledge there and especially um if you have had a chance to go to hear him speak and you are familiar with respect to some of the information which I, I have went ahead and said just a little bit just a while ago, by means, I mean, you can understand it too. Um, his book, in fact, which a lot of us um, in the community are familiar with, I'm going to go ahead and hold this up, The Destruction of Black Civilization. There it is in the lower left-hand corner there. Um, such a wonderful book. Um, the background there, I mean, he spent pretty much a number of years on the continent um, doing pretty much field research all over the, the entire continent, right? And um, it's... It's such a wonderful, wonderful um, journey that he went on to go ahead and, and, and actually do this type of work, you know, and, and especially during a time where we're looking at our story being minimized by those who simply do not know it, right? And more importantly, for us who should know our story, simply did not, right? And we took, of course, the words of others, right? So it's something, of course, he does outline here in the book. However, though, um, I won't be outlining the whole book today. I'm looking at spe a specific portion of the book. And, and entirely, simply, we're looking at pretty much the last few chapters of the book. Simply the notes for a race-based action plan. Um, we'll definitely go into that in a little bit further, and, you know, just elucidate in regards to, of course, what that entails. Um, I'm not asking any question in regards to how or the why. However, though, um, once we get in, of course, to the details, you can definitely understand in regards to why pockets of, of course, you know, pockets of organizations do exist. You know, and of course, it just comes to us in regards to now coming together and making something like this happen as uh, uh, coming into fruition, so to speak. So um, if anyone has the book, by means I'd like to go ahead and follow on. I am looking at pretty much from pages 340 through right up until about 360. Um, I'm going to go into this a little bit in regards to um, what he said during those early pages there. Um, regarding the actual unity, um, the unity portion of the, of the chapter, he states the following. Um, the unity that we must seek, excuse me, the unity that we seek must be achieved not by organization alone. Right. The total membership has to be mutually and individually involved in activities which each feels is important and will directly be beneficial to him and her in his or her lifetime. You know, and this is very important. Now, going back to the first part in regards to organization alone. Of course, it's wonderful to be organized. It's wonderful to have an organization have these, all these lofty ideas. However, though, if the members within the organization do not feel that, of course, that it is not beneficial for them, your organization will falter, right? And it's something like this as well, simply where we're looking at having a collective uni unified front. If, if there isn't enough of us who believe in it, of course, that this collective unified front, then of course it will fall to the wayside or simply crumble, you know? There won't be definitely a, a, a we're gonna use a foundation as, as a lack of a better term. So there won't be a foundation there. You know, um, continuing on, he states there, of course, economic activities are so fundamental in any truly upward movement, you know, and as well as all community enterprises, contrary to capitalism, will be owned and operated by the people in the community. 
And let's backtrack there. Economic activities. You know, um, I've been around circles. I've been around people who simply said, you know, I have stated that, yes, economics is a must. And which is true. However, though, once again, if we don't have a comprehensive plan, then we're going to be investing in so many areas, you know, or maybe a lack of investing in so many areas. Right? And the last by means, of course, you know, when it comes to community enterprises, we're looking at simply, of course, enterprises being owned by the people, you know, for the people, you know, and more importantly, you know what, um, and not just in one area alone. We're looking at simply developing, of course, these enterprises as chains right across, of course, the city, right across, of course, you know, an area, so to speak, you know. So, I mean, you know, that, that way, for instance, now, if you have a nice East food market, but it's only just in one area, you know, and as much as, you know, some of us would want to go ahead and, and travel to that area, it would be a lot more convenient, of course, if nice East food market would definitely be, you know, in different areas, of course, of the city, like it is now. Right. So by means, you know what, like there's some truth to truth to speak there in regards to, of course, what this gentleman is saying, you know, um, as, as I mentioned before, of course, we are going to go ahead and elucidate on all the points here. Um, by means, I am going to throw in some working definitions. I am going to throw in some, of course, real life examples. So that way we can see that um, it has been tried. It has been tested, um, and of course, in pockets. But one thing we have definitely lacked, is, of course, is that collective unified front, you know, as mentioned before. Now, going back to the gentleman himself, Dr. Chancellor Williams, um, I mentioned before in regards to one of my most favorite authors, and, and for the reason being is this. Um, when you're looking at researching at least 6,500 years of history, you know, and putting into a, a one volume, right, it speaks so much in regards to the dedication, you know, and this is one of the reasons why, you know, this gentleman is one of my favorite authors, for the fact that his dedication to our cause. You know, um, regarding the, the author of the writing style, um, it is a little bit more advanced. So, so of course, you know, um, we are looking at, for instance, now, um, maybe at least a grade eight to maybe grade nine reading level. However, though, um, there isn't anything in this book that cannot be explained, you know, on any sort of level to for that anybody who will be able to not be able to go ahead and understand it which is so important because, once again, when you're looking at our story, I mean, it can be complex, and especially history can be dry. However, though, um, the example that he does display throughout the whole book, right, provides us with more of a visual representation, right? So we can go ahead and backtrack and, of course, and use, you know, whether it's maps, whether it's some, of course, you know, um, you know, speaking of tribes, you know, you know and, and using them as, as examples by means, you know, it, it is essential in regards to that as well, right? Um, Forgive me, let me go ahead and do, do a little bit of branding here. Now, with respect, to, of course, to the plan, he devises the plan within seven points. Um, and let's go through the, each points. The first one, we're looking at the division of economic planning and development. The second, um, division of political action. Third, division of public education. Um, fourth, division of community services. Uh, fifth, division of youth activities. The sixth division of Pan African Affairs, and last, uh, Commission for Spiritual Life and Assistance. Each one, of course, you know, as I said before, we will go ahead and elucidate just a little bit so that way um, I'm just not going ahead and actually reading, of course, you know, the topics itself. But my means, you can go ahead and see, of course, with respect to each and one of these divisions, you know, they're already in play. But as we mentioned before, of course, you know, it's kind of like Voltron, where each of the lines is simply out there, but they just haven't come together to form, of course, that Voltron, that whole unified front as of yet. How much time we got left? We got a few seconds left. Good. <laughs> um, sit back, hold tight. Um, you know, like I said, I'm excited to go ahead and present this information today in this book. It's one of my favorite ones. Um, it's something that I try to go ahead and read at least once a year. And, and by all means, you know, um, let's have a wonderful show today. Here to help you. We'll be back after a few messages. Are you retiring smart? Make your home's equity work for you. With your home's equity in our 30 years of experience, the Retire Smart Properties team can help you achieve the quality of life you've always wanted. Our services are 360 degrees. We'll give you advice, take care of staging and selling, and help you find the perfect home and community to transition to. It's time to enjoy the retirement lifestyle you deserve. Visit our website today to learn how you can use your home to retire comfortably. The Retire Smart Properties Team, powered by REMAX West.
What did you find out about ancient African civilizations? Well, to begin with, I found out that uh, uh, ancient African civilization was, first of all, the beginning of civilization. I found out that there could be no uh, record found anywhere that antedates the advanced civilization of Africa. And this was the finding of uh, European and other scholars. Uh, and they were now gradually admitting it. And when the evidence became overwhelming, the question arose, could Africans have achieved all this? Welcome back to another edition of Here to Help You. I am Dave Rankin. Um, if you missed us for our first segment today, we are looking at um, a specific portion of this book right here. The Destruction of Black Civilization by Dr. Chancellor Williams. Um, once again, you can see down in the lower left-hand corner. Um, what a wonderful gentleman. I don't think um, I can go ahead and, and say or, or give any any reverence to, you know, which would not be under, underestimated or understated when I said um, what this gentleman has done. Um, for a lot of us who are beginning to understand our story, um, and if you have not picked up this book, please go ahead and do so. It is something that you should be in your libraries. Um, for those of us who have read it, by means, take the time to reread it over and over again. By means, continue, to, of course, to go ahead and learn the story, pass, on, pass it on to generation to generation. And more importantly, in regards to what we're looking at today, I'm looking at Chapter 14, which is Organizing a Race for um, an Action. Um, as you mentioned before, for this um, race-based plan, we, we looked at seven. There are seven um, divisions um, which we'll be reviewing today. Um, the vision of economic planning and development, political action, public education, community services, youth activities, Pan-African affairs, and as well as Commission for Spiritual Life and Assistance. So let's jump right into it. Our first one here regarding the division of economic planning and development. Um, this too has about seven components in there. Um, the first, we're looking at um, promotion of community and cooperative enterprise. Second, finance, banking, and of course, credit unions. Um, third, Institute of Technology and Personal Training. Fourth, Central Office of Accounting and Techno Technological Control. Fifth, Department of Land Reclamation and Farming. Sixth, Transportation and Distribution. And last, Central Purchasing and Supply Agency. Um, let's get into it. So the first in there with respect to the Division of Economic Planning and Development. As you mentioned before in the last segment, um, this has to be one of the most important um, items within the actual plan itself. Um, of course, any and everything that we do costs money. However, though, you know what? The money has to come from somewhere, and it should come from us with, with no outside involvement. However, though, we understand in regards to you know, what's happening today, especially with a lot of organizations which are dependent upon uh, the grants through the government. However, though, um, to be truly independent has to truly come from us. With that being said, he states here that um, this should be the foundation of the most important activities of the whole race. All community enterprises shall be cooperatively, and emphasizes cooperatively, yes, collectively owned and controlled by the people of the community. Um, for giving you an example, I looked at the collective black people's movement and their economic plan. You can always go on to their website, which is www.cbpm.org. You know, and um, very simply, they stated this. If a thousand black people came together and put to together at least 27 cents a day into a collective account, after one year, we would have generated at least $99,000, right? And that's, of course, not looking at compound interest, you know, or fluctuating or whatever it is today, right? However, though, 27 cents a day. You know, whether that works out, I believe that works out to maybe close to about $108 for the month. Um, by means, I mean, my math is a little bit off. However, though, um, it could be that simple in regards, of course, getting something started. However, though, um, once again, people, we have to go ahead and actually believe in the mission in order for this to go ahead and work. Um, for us now, of course, we are primary consumers. We know that all the ads have been targeted towards us. If you know it, um, in fact, I was looking at um, I was looking at CP24 today, and in fact, um, they had a brother and sister duo, a country singer duo, right? And um, in the lyrics of the song, "Turn Up," 
appeared in the lyrics of their song. So you can see that regards to the influence that we have on um, on other cultures, right? So, and as much as you know what, if we can believe that we can, you know, purchase to say I don't know, uh, canary diamonds or or you know, some red bottom shoes or even a pair of Jordans for X amount of dollars, right? We have to believe in an actual collective plan that is going to go ahead and benefit us as well. You know? um, so let's go into some of the departments here. Um, the first one here, the promotion of community cooperative enterprises. Simply their mandate would be to go ahead and conduct surveys to determine what the people would want and need. Um, we're looking at, of course, the soundness of each product, uh, excuse me, of each project. Um, of course, this needs to be stress tests and so on and so forth, right? Um, and it's also, we're looking at ways and means of community financing uh, so that we, of course, we can go in and secure the trained personnel and as well as management to go ahead and um, oversee each and every, each and all the enterprises. You know, um, this is wonderful with respect, of course, to now with the example that I can give you. You're looking at, for instance, the African People's Socialist Party out in the States. Um, they're based out of Florida, I, I believe, and they're spearheaded by Chairman O'Malley. Through their organization, they've been able to go ahead and actually open up a few enterprises. Um, they do have a gym and as well as a furniture store, just to name two. However, though, each and one of these enterprises are owned solely by the people and it is for the people. So it is something, once again, as working definitions and once again, as real life examples, it has been done, right? So we can't use the excuse in regards to how we can do it or, or you know what, um, it can't be done. Simply, it has, it already has been done. Right. And you know what? For those of us who are interested by means, it all it takes is, you know, maybe reaching out to them, find out exactly how they did it, what type of issues or challenges they face. And more importantly, you know what? Um, how did they go ahead and actually look at the successes, their success stories as well? Next, um, we're looking at a financing, banking and as well as credit unions. I like this um, because there are many people in our circles who have simply stated that we do not have a, a bank in this country, you know, for us and by us. If we're looking at our neighbors across the border, by means our brothers and sisters over there, they have numerous amount of black owned banks over there, you know, and what's stopping us from going ahead and owning one of these here as well, right? But once again, if we're looking at it, having something like this, it has to be fully owned and controlled by the people, right? Um, continuing on to the notes, um, development of a central national bank of the organization, something similar in regards to what the UNI did, um, so the UNIA did um, a few years ago. Um, promoting a concerning of banks operated by members of the race and expansion of financing and banking systems. Um, this is wonderful because, of course, you know, when we can't go to a simply, you know, you know, like an RBC or a TD for a loan or a credit line, by means we can look, to, of course, to going to our own, you know, and who knows, you know, maybe, the, you know, the deal points would be a lot less. Maybe, you know, the structure will be a lot, be a lot less as well. You know, with respect, of course, the banks, they have to look at now, of course, total debt service ratios, you know, and of course, they have to follow those mandates to so buy means, you know, and not to say, you know what, um, we wouldn't have to go ahead and follow those simple, uh, a, a mandate set by us. But we're looking at simply are going to our, uh, you know, people who look like us, you know, people we can go ahead and relate to in regards to the struggle, um, people we can go ahead and relate in regards to what we're looking to go ahead and put forward. This is something now, of course, you know, would go ahead and take away some of that stress testing, let alone, of course, that total debt ratios. Maybe they could be played with in that sort of areas as well, right? To continue on as well, um, regarding the financing, banking, as well as credit unions, we're looking at day-to-day -day banking functionality of the branches, which is wonderful, um, whether it's checking savings accounts, you know, uh, from credit cards as well. Um, for, of course, you know what, um, the members of the race, you know, and as well as, you know, looking at simply, you know, loan services, as you mentioned before, whether commercial or non-commercial as well. You know, um, to give you some examples which have, have taken place in the past, I would mention, of course, you know, with the UNIA, um, they had also a credit union at one point in time. And as well as, you know what, and I found this interesting, the JCA, they also had a credit union a number of years ago. It was called the Jamaican Canadian Credit Union. You know, and um, for those of us who are looking for a little bit of a history, um, I guess, you know, it's a, I guess knowledge behind there, um, look up Bromley Armstrong, who spearheaded, of course, both movements there at that point in time. So that's definitely an interesting um, time. Um, maybe, you know, we can have some elders, you know, who have, um, who have lived to see this, you know, who can go ahead and steer us in the right direction with respect to now of, you know, finding out exactly where the pitfalls lied, you know, where were some of the challenges, where were some of the issues, and more importantly, you know what, how, um, what simply spearheaded the decline and, and ultimate destruction, because you know what, they're no longer here. So by means, you know, once again, as working definitions and true and tested examples, we've had some. You know, going to the second portion here, the Institute of Technology and Personnel Training. Um, 
I remember, you know, getting get together with a couple of elders at one point in time, especially meeting at the Ujima house, right? And of course, one of the elders said, you know what, like, this is a, a, sp a space here where simply, you know what, we should be going ahead and housing, uh, whether it's scientists, for them to go ahead and conduct their experiments, you know, funding, and of course, archaeologists, for, the, for them to go ahead and, you know, um, you know, simply go ahead and do their field research, right? So, I mean, this is something, of course, once again, that needs to be done, um, just going into the notes here. Um, so, Engaging in the training of expert technicians of various fields of operation and as well as developing expertise required for large scale manufacturing operations, anywhere from shoes, clothing to hats to underwear to frozen foods, you name it, to furniture, as you mentioned, um, to respect to the African um, People's Socialist Party. Right. So, I mean, this institution, you know, simply needs to be, um, once again, funded by us, you know, for us. And more importantly, you know, tied, of course, to the central organization. Right. Um, Shenkan to Diop. In his book, Black Africa, on page 80, he said this best. We know that an African technician placed in, an, placed in optimum conditions of responsibility must and can quickly assimilate the knowledge needed so that he in turn can direct a whole complex on which the life of the nation and in due, life, in due the time, the lifetime, um, the whole continent will depend on. Right. So, I mean, this is something that's very, it's needed. You know, um, and in fact, you know, if somebody has not went, you know, thought about this, maybe this is something, you know, that we should consider, you know, because we have tons, tons of wonderful minds that are out there simply, you know, in the field of science, you know, in the field of manufacturing. You simply do not have the space to buy means an institute of technology and as well as, you know, having the personnel to be trained by means we'll go ahead and flourish, you know, especially, you know, since once again, it is for us, by us. You know, next. Uh, with respect to central office of accounting and financial uh, finance control or financial control excuse me we're looking at simply here i see you i see you. let me go through this one real quick and then of course we'll, we'll jump into a break right uh you know i can't see the camera back there <laughs> right um just to go into this real quickly um something like this will go ahead and enhance our deficiencies in money management and control which is something that if we definitely we, we lack you know, um, and also uh, to perform the rigorous data and all income and expenditure expenditures of the national organization. You know, and um, simply we're looking at this now. Of course, we're looking at stress test stress testing. You know, um, simply looking at market analysis. Right, a um, couple organizations that come to mind are simply the National Association of Black Accountants out in the states, and as well as the Canadian Association of Black Accountants as well. So that means you know, levying and of course you know upon their expertise, which will definitely help us. You know, um, further our cause. You know, and with that being said, let's go ahead on a break and we'll be back. Hello, my name is Anisha and I'm the production manager of TCN Network. Have you ever wanted to host your own show? Do you have a message to share? Well, you're in luck. We are looking for dynamic and unique individuals to host their own shows. We are seeking people who are committed, motivated, and energetic. Do you want to be the next Jimmy Fallon, Ellen DeGeneres, or Shane and Ryan from BuzzFeed Unsolved? Start here. Fill out the proposed show form on mytcntv.com. We're here to educate, support, and build the community. Can you lead by example? Go the extra mile and seek knowledge? Are you humble, disciplined, responsible, selfless, and enthusiastic? Those are our core values. And if you identify with them, you could be part of a growing network that focuses on positivity and uplifting our community. We can't wait for you to join us on TCN Network and hope to hear from you soon. Welcome back to another segment of Here to Help You. Uh, once again, my name is uh, Dave Rankin. Um, if you have, if you're just joining us now and you haven't seen the previous two sections, uh, segments that are, um, we are looking at this book right here, The Destruction of Black Civilization, uh, Chapter 14 and Beyond, simply looking at uh, organizing a race for action. Um, it has been divided pretty much into seven sections. The first section, simply we are, are simply, um, you know, going through it, breaking it down slowly, is the division of economic planning and development. We looked at, of course, you know, um, community cooperative enterprises, um, um, owning our own banks, um, having an institute of technology and as well as personnel training, 
right? And then that leads us into, of course, you know, the last segment that we did before the break, which was um, having a central office for accounting and financial control. The next segment which we'll look at um, is of importance, and it is, of course, um, obtaining land for farming, right? Um, what can we say? Land is essential, right? And it is essential to, of course, the survival, uh, you know? Um, we, you know, Muta Baruka once said, you know, you cannot eat three times, three, four times of the day, and you don't, don't want to go to bed and actually plant something to give back to the earth, which has given to you. So by means, you know, this is something we have to look at. Um, so um, black farmers, collective, and as well as African um, food basket, and as well as a drink of farms, a dinkra farms, by means. You know, these are working examples in regards to, of course, this model. Um, which is represented within the plan. Um, of course, um, you know, vegetables, whether you're looking at livestock, whether you're looking at homes, it's simply for the farmers to go ahead and, you know, and live on. Or simply just camp camp services, you know, um, or retreats primarily, you know, right? So, I mean, you know, like this is definitely something that's needed, you know, within uh, within our, our own structure. Uh, and more importantly, you know, we understand and we've all seen the videos, you know, and, you know, I hate to call it, the, uh, you know, simply, uh, you know, a primary culture, but by means, Countless of our people have gone to, of course, an Asian store, right? I'm seeing, of course, you know what? Um, wow, it's wow. I, I, <laughs> from the coconut water, having plastic in the coconut water, you know, to have them make cabbage out of plastic, cabbage out of plastic, right? Oh wow, you know, and and it is slowly trickling down in our, you know, in our community, you know, and by means, you just things that cause these are can cancer causing agents, you know. So by means, you know, as long as we know where, of course, where the food is coming from, you know, and it's grown by us, for us, by means, you know, it produces a healthier nation. And more importantly, you know, a healthier people becomes healthier minds and body and as well as spirit. Next, transportation and distrib distribution. Um, we're looking simply, of course, you know, long distance shipping, whether it's by a bo um, boat or simply from, you know, from the farms, simply, you know, and, and other plants or manufacturing areas, you know, whether it's... um. Once again, boats, but whether it's vans, whether it's trucks, you know, um, and of course, you know, the services to go ahead and continue the maintenance, you know, um, with the UNIA they, as a working model, of course, they had their ships, which were simply um, for this cause, right? The shipping, of course, of manufacturing goods, you know, um, going back and forth, not only just, of course, the, the you know, going abroad into Europe or going into you know, the, the, the continent, but going, of course, into the Caribbean as well. So by means, this is something that needs to be looked at, of course, once again, that's going to go ahead and further the action and further the cause. Last, of course, we, in, under that first division is central purchasing and supply. It's responsible for the proper location and supervision of the various warehouses required as the community enterprises expand. I don't know, um, what can we say, you know what, um, we need different areas, you know, to go ahead and, you know, and oversee different, by means, you know, different things that we're looking at, you know, we're purchasing and supply, by means, that's exactly what it is, we're looking at simply, of course, looking at, excuse me, you know, what, overseeing, of course, the purchasing of, of goods, you know, overseeing, of course, the purchasing of, of course, of land, you know, of, of, of you know, building or warehouses, you know, and simply, once again, you know, but, and it's, everything is pretty much, it's all interconnected with respect to what we need to do, you know, in order to go ahead and further our cause. Bless you. No worries. <laughs> our second segment, our division of political action, and, and this is important, um, and not just, of course, you know, because we do have members of our community who have joined, um, whether it's the liberals or the NDPs or, you know, or the, the PCs, but by means, you know what, um, we have to get involved, more involved in the political process. If we're not at the table, we're on the menu. Simple as that. So with that um, division, we're looking at to promote and assist voter registration. Um, two, to provide profile of, of candidates, whether they're local, provincial, or national, or federal, or so on and speak, right? Um, help prepare bills, right? Um, we looked at the Federation of Black Canadians, you know, a few weeks ago, you know, at an upcoming case with um, Justice McLeod. But by means, you know, with respect to what the Federation has done so far, I mean, they went ahead, you know, and um, through their lobbying efforts, we've now been mentioned, of course, in, in the bill, you know, in the budget. So hats off to them. You know, um, liaison with Parliament, you know, um, if we're looking at the indigenous, you know, population, they've begun to, of course, to liaison with the Parliament, you know, and, and they, have, they have a seat at the table. So by means, we need one too, you know. And as well as, of course, all actions that can be taken through the political process to protect and promote the welfare of our community, something that is very important, especially with the heavily, heavily mentioned gun violence. And by means, you know, we need, we need those seats at the table so that we can go and advocate for ourselves, you know what I'm saying? 
So, and with that being said, that is a working example. Let's go to the video regarding the Canadian Black Caucus. It's an excellent, excellent, excellent organization. Well, Gwen Chapman is um, someone who luckily came from a very strong family background. Um, my father taught us that we are a brother's keeper. And um, so we've always um, had the idea of looking out for each other and trying to do whatever we can to make our community, our world a better place. So um, in a nutshell, I think um, if I have to define myself, I would say I'm someone that cares a lot about my fellow human beings and I try to do whatever I can to make sure and ensure that they are doing well and um, that our community is growing and developing into the great people in the great community that we support. Canadian Black Caucus, um, big up Gwen, Sister Gwen for her efforts there regarding, of course, ensuring that um, we are beginning to go ahead and be more engaged in the political process. Now, the only thing, of course, you know, go ahead and, you know, tip the scales is that we need to go ahead and create our own political party. You know, that will go ahead and, you know, send shockwaves around the world so that everybody knows, you know, we mean business, you know, so to speak, you know. Um, but once again, we definitely um, accept and we are appreciative of the efforts of the Canadian Black Caucus. Um, we, we definitely are appreciative with respect to now them wanting to go into the inner cities, you know, and begin to go ahead and looking at the younger generations and involving them, you know, and letting them know and giving them the knowledge and the tools with respect to you know, this political process, what it entails, you know, and simply, you know what, a lot of these children out there, they understand in regards to what it is that they're looking for to initiate change. So by me, this is something that's definitely needed, you know. Um, and once again, we thank you very much for your efforts. For the third the division, and we got a couple minutes here to go go through it. Um, I won't rush it because by means it, it is very much important. We're looking at the division of public ed education, you know. And um, when we're looking at education here, we are looking at simply of achieving a higher standard of teaching and as well as student achievement on every level and as well as to develop a better system of general adult education in all communities where, where we are you know and we're not looking simply as you know what um looking within the schools simply you know um we're looking at um of course you know what um education now with respect to, of course to having better communities you know um a better health outlook um you know um of course you know when it comes to you know the literature to uh, creating our own textbooks, um, have our own journals or magazines, you know, um, community action newsletters as well. You know, um, we're looking, and of course, now we're suspecting now um, having now a committee of visitors to go, that will be able to go around to schools at least and on behalf of parents, you know, to ensure, of course, you know, the children, you know, um, they are not being mistreated. And more importantly, you know, they have a representation because we understand, you know, we're perspective now with a lot of our children simply, they just simply just do not know the rights. A lot of our parents do not understand their rights, especially now when it comes to now suspension hearings. Um, if we have a community of, a committee of visitors, by means they can go ahead and liaise on behalf of the parent and the student with, the, with that respect. Um, fourth, you know what? Let me not go into a fourth. Let me go ahead and expand just a little bit further. Um, I can understand with respect to you know some drawback now uh, you know on the plan, especially portions of the plan which we've gone through so far. Um, by means you know it's to be taken as a general plan and is always can always be expanded upon. But however, though, um, for those of us who simply don't know where to start, this book right here is a place of reference. You know, as you mentioned in the book, um, five maybe six people to go ahead, you know, and actually go through this plan and have discussions about this plan. You know, um, this will go ahead and I would feel the, the necessary discussions, you know, and from there by means, you know what, um, start on the grassroots level, start going, of course, into the inner cities, you know, the, all the, the neighborhoods, you know, which these, these are so-called, you know, um, city has labeled as at risk, you know, and, and continue now to have these discussions now in regards to the, you know, a plan of such nature, you know, and find out exactly where we would be able to go ahead and fit in or more importantly, I mean, you know what? We've went ahead and actually discussed some of these things here in regards to, you know, real life examples. By means, what does it take to go ahead and talk to a few organizations and see, you know, what would it take to go ahead and bring them together to go ahead and construct something larger? We're going on our break, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dave Rankin. This is Here to Help You. We'll see you back in a few moments.
Greetings, greetings, and welcome back to another segment, another edition of Here to Help You. I am Dave Ranking, um, and I am so elated to go ahead and actually relay this information today from one of my favorite authors and his book, The Destruction of Black Civilization. Um, for those of us who are just joining today, I'm not outlining the whole book by means. I'm looking at a specific portion, uh, chapter 14 and beyond. We're looking at organizing a race for action. Um, if you haven't joined us, or if you haven't picked up the book of By Me, this is the first time you are joining us today. Um, our shows, normally either through myself, my wife, or simply you know through our guests, we love to go ahead and offer solutions um, to some of the challenges, some of the issues that we are facing, um, of course, as Africans here in the diaspora. And by means, you know, today's is, is no different in regards, to, of course, to the simple structure that we like to go ahead and uh, provide to you each and every week. Now, I've already gone through approximately four, I'm uh, sorry, three um, divisions. We're going to go ahead and tie in, of course, the rest of them now from here on in. Um, for those of us who have missed it, um, please go ahead and review the previous segments. Um, but, and also, um, I will be going ahead and posting it uh, on the Here to Help uh, website later on, this either this evening or later on tomorrow. Um, but, but by means, you know, let's continue. Um, our fourth division will be the Division of Community Services. Um, and they would entail a Department of Health and Sanitation, simply a council of physicians, dentists, nurses, medical aides, uh, and laymen, and as well as home visiting or home, home services. Um, simply, of course, you know, like the Black Crosses, um, uh, if Black Cross nurses, if you remember the UNIA, you know. Um, um, two, um, community clinics. Um, what can we say? You know, um, something like at first, you know, like Taibu, Taibu you know, simply who... Um, they have their community health center, you know, and, and it's a wonderful place. I've, I haven't visited personally, but by me, I've seen, I've seen pictures, you know, and I've seen the actual tour, um, you know, and big up to, to my wife who had a chance to go, go and visit as well for the tour. But, and it's an excellent facility. But once again, you know what, instead of just having a one end of the city, you know, it's something that will be definitely beneficial, of course, in other areas of the city as well, right? Um, three, I'm looking at clean community programs, and this is something that definitely would be beneficial to all of us. You know, how do we go ahead and obtain, of course, you know, these these communities, you know, and, and um, you know what, turn their outlook upside down with respect, of course, to how they treat themselves, you know, um, from a health perspective, right? Four, now better home life counseling services. And this is this is something that's needed, definitely. Once again, um, we're looking at simply, of course, you know, um, having an outlet, you know, or whether something's going wrong in the home or something wrong with you personally and having an outlet so that you can go, you know, go, go speak to somebody, you know, whether it's you're going into, you know, an actual, uh, you know, a facility or simply having, you know, members of the facility come to the home, you know, but by, by means, you know what, it's important that our people do not feel left alone, you know, uh, and, you know, and they feel that they have to suffer in silence. And that's very big. You know, also um, a home beautiful program, which will also entail, once again, you know, and guys, so of course, cleaner communities, um, counseling, you know, so to speak as well. Um, also, legal aid services, whether it's, you know, the African Canadian Legal um, Society, whether it's the um, Black Action Defense Committee, whether it's my aunt legal services, you know, um, but by means, you know, once again, we're trying to can create components, you know, which would go ahead, you know, and be part of a, a bigger picture. And by providing with these real life examples, you know, which are still here or, or simply have been trust, tied and, and, you know, tried and tested, uh, we can see that these things are feasible, right? And once again, it just takes for us to go ahead and come together so we can go ahead and bring this, you know, um, and like Voltron, basically, you can have all five heads come together, you know what I'm saying? Um, also, um, I like to go ahead and put this in here as mental health services. Um, as we all know, of course, mental health is, is big, you know, um, transgenerational um, trauma and as we've all faced, you know, um, most of us, you know, simply, simply just do not know what to do, you know, with respect, of course, to how to go ahead and alleviate that trauma, you know, uh, you know, um, having somebody available, once again, 
for you to speak to, whether it's going to a facility or simply having somebody come into the home, you know, who is part of a bigger plan um, would be beneficial to all of us. That's for sure. The fifth portion would be the division of youth activities, you know, and, and just to explain them, to assume leadership roles in all areas and undertaking for which they are capable. You know, students and non-students should join hands in the race building efforts. And this is so important. Um, sometimes, of course, you know what, as parents, you know, who are knee deep in the struggle, sometimes we don't get a chance to go ahead and bring our children, you know, in because, of course, of the language, you know, so to speak, you know, and, and more important, you know, sometimes, you know, there just might be a distraction as well. But however, though, if the children feel that they have a rightful place, you know, with respect to, of course, to the building efforts, um, they too will come to understand, you know, how important their input and their own output is, you know, to, to become thriving, you know, members of society, right? You know, um, to continue on, to develop a Department of Children Affairs, whether it's up to the age of the majority within this country or simply, you know what, um, extending it beyond the age of majority by means, you know what, this is something, you know, it has to be discussed and put on the table. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. The aim simply here is to have the children, you know, have specific and important roles for all children and all youth. You know, um, it's important, definitely important for them to go ahead and understand, you know, once again, that they have a say, they are part of this, this plan. Because, uh, you know, as elders, you know, we understand, of course, with the need to go ahead and making decisions for them. But once again, if they're involved in the process, you know what, um, once again, they become more thriving members of society. And more importantly, nobody's going to be able to fool them because, you know, they know their stuff, you know, and they know, they understand, of course, the organizational efforts that need to take place. Number six, um, we're looking at the division of Pan-African Affairs. This is so important because, of course, as we begin to go ahead, you know, and grow, you know, and, and build our outreach, simply we need to go ahead and extend our outreach out to um, members of our community worldwide. You know, um, Dr. Chancellor Williams states here, to maintain direct contacts and as well as close relationships with the people and the states of black Africa, whether it's um, the Caribbean as well as other black population centers around the world. Um, could you just imagine with respect to now, of course, being able to um, have an organization here and be able to go ahead and reach out um, to, through the Caribbean? being able to go ahead and reach out to, of course, the continent, you know, and have that triangular effort, you know, um, in regards, of course, to the race building efforts, being able to contribute to some of the, uh, to the issues in, uh, which the Caribbean may be facing, or simply just to give a, a working example, China went ahead and of course, you know, they invested $60 billion in on the continent. So imagine, of course, now we had that um, um, spending power, you know, to go ahead and invest in the continent. You know, but once again, you know, through organizations where collective efforts, something like this can take place. You know, um, Dr. Williams elucidates here that um, the purposes for this specific division would be to keep them fully informed regards to what we are doing here, to also to learn from them regards to what they're doing over there as well. Um, what are their success stories, their challenges, you know, and more important, you know, how we can go ahead and build off each other. Um, number three, to find out what obstacles in each area, including our own, and to counsel together on ways and means of overcoming the seemingly impossible, right? Um, of course, we all like to think that we suffer in silence, but by means, you know, and, um, once we have a partner who has a different outlook, by means, um, we no longer suffer in silence, but my, by means, we're not putting that first foot forward in order to go ahead and make the necessary changes that we need. Number four, to explore and then actually determine definite ways for mutual assistance. And last, to trade in the exchange of goods and services, scientific and technical knowledge. Um, this is important, definitely important with respect to finding out how they do things, finding out how we do things here. Um, maybe there's something here that we have that they don't have, or maybe they have something over there that simply we just haven't thought of yet, and which both parties or all parties can benefit from. The only way you to find out, of course, we need to go ahead and extend that hand, you know, and, and by means, you know, this is something that, that needs to be taken a little bit more seriously. Number six, we're looking at the division of intelligence and security. Um, although Dr. Williams does not mention military, this is where military will come into play. Um, whether it's, of course, our own um, police services, whether it's, of course, once again, building up our own armies, you know, so that way we, we no longer get taken advantage of. You know, our own security services simply were 
You know, if we're bringing in a speaker who is coming in to go ahead and speak on our behalf, we hire our own security firms to, to ensure, of course, the safe travel, right? Um, the safe passage. You know, that nothing, of course, will go ahead and, and, and happen to, of course, these members of our society. You know, um, Dr. Williams elucidates here that the division would mainly uh, maintain highly trained intelligent agents for the following. Um, to check for internal subversion and activities of agents placed within the organization of others, um, by others, I should say. Um, of course, he's simply looking at, um, by means, um, spies, so, so to speak, you know. Um, so we can go ahead and root out the spies who simply do not have our best interests, whether they look like us or not. Um, <clears throat> number two, to secure complete records of all persons by or connected with the organization. You know, and, and this is um, important because, of course, if a plan of this is supposed to be formulated, um, databases are going to be collected. You know, and we need a secure facilities to ensure that, you know, that hacking doesn't take place. You know, that the distribution, of course, of our client's information, you know, our members of, of the, the actual organization, you know, their information won't be spread out, you know, and, of course, looming all over the, the World Wide Web. So, by means, this is something that we need to be taking um, into account if an organization, if any organization needs to um, be um, successful. You know, um, third, uh, to promote formation and training of self-protection units everywhere to defend the community against unlawful and unjust raids and other forms of murderous attacks. Uh, I mentioned that before in regards to, of course, having our own police services, um, or maybe our own neighborhood watch. But also, I mean, you know what, having a true military as well. We're simply, you know what, um, we all know what's going on. I mean, we see the countless, countless, you know, stories with respect to our brothers and sisters across the border uh, simply who have been murdered you know, um, unlawfully and unjustly by, you know, um, members of, of, of other races or other culture, cultures, you know, uh, and more importantly, you know what, um, to help our neighborhoods feel safe again. You know, I, I like what um, New Era Detroit has done, New Era Chicago has done as well with respect, of course, to police in their own communities, to ensure, you know, community activism is taking place. You know, uh, something like that could definitely go ahead and be beneficial for us here within the GTA and uh, let alone, of course, right across, this can right across Canada. Um, last which is the Commission for Spiritual Life and Assistance. The major task for this division would include, um, number one, to determine the direction of the civilization. Number two, to understand the meaning of life while trying to approve it. Number three, to enlist the cooperation of people of all cultures and faiths in an all-out drive for a better world. And number four, to maintain an emergency assistance program for families or communities in distress. Um, when we're looking at people with different faiths, you know, within our own community, um, this is simply where you would come into play. Um, Malcolm once said that you need to go ahead and chuck your spiritual faith at the door if you're looking at coming together as a collective. We can't have Christian versus Muslim, Muslim versus, you know, um, whether it's uh, spiritual or New Age spiritual, you know, New Abian versus Christian. You know, we can't have that dissension, of course, once again, we can't win. You know, as Jay-Z says, um, the family don't win if, if they feud, right, so to speak. So by means, you know, this is something we would come into play. Um, we're looking at, of course, you know, cooperation of all cultures and all faiths. Um, with respect, of course, to racism, for those who are battling, for all of us who are, who are battling racism on all fronts, you know, we want to go ahead and see the elimination of racism. I've often said it, that racism cannot be eliminated by us alone, that we are going to have to, to have a concentrated effort from people of all cultures. So this division will go ahead and ensure, you know, what the discussions will come in place. Um, of course, the uh, um, really tangible and sustainable efforts will come into place as well, right? And as well as to maintain an emergency assistance program for families of communities in distress. Um, this is important because, of course, as we all know, um, we have members of our community who are simply on their way down the mountain, and some of our members of our community were simply on their way up the mountain, you know, um, families who simply do not have the funds to go ahead and either to afford treatment, you know, of their loved ones, or simply, you know what, cannot afford to go ahead and bury a loved one. Some, a division like this would go ahead and assist in ensuring that, you know what, that um, timely funds are, 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 are definitely allocated to these families and our loved ones, you know. Um, we are so appreciative once again um, for all of you taking the time to go ahead and sit here with me as I go through uh, the plan here from this book, The Destruction of Black Civilization uh, by Ch Chancellor Williams. Once again, we looked at from pages 343 straight to 360 of the plan. Um, it's such a remarkable feat 
um, and um, what this gentleman has done for him to go, of course, you know, travel throughout the continent to go ahead and not only just outline our history, but also charter a very general plan in regards to how we as a whole can go ahead and make our lives better through a collective effort. And this is something that definitely should not be, um, not be diminished, you know, and definitely should be discussed a lot further within our communities and as well as all our circles. Um, Anisha, I thank you very much for your efforts today. I mean, sure, and of course, you know what, we have the, all those pictures and all those videos up here today. Uh, once again, I am Dave Rankin. Um, my wife thanks us as well, definitely, for ensuring that um, we had a smooth sailing show, and more importantly, we have the information to go and relate to all of you. Um, we thank you once again for going ahead and joining us. We're signing off. We'll see you all next week. Peace and love, family.